would you describe the peak oil theory for people that maybe aren't familiar with it? Well, in layman terms, it's, it's, uh, it, it is premised uh, that oil is a finite resource and that at some point in time, we will run out of it. And at various point in times, a lot of people have come up with different dates. We were thought to run out of the stuff in the 1990s, then we were thought to run out of the turn of the millennium, then was, and then suddenly shale happened and uh, deep water drilling happened, and suddenly all the peak oil theorists just retreated into the background. So it was all the rage as, uh, as recently as 2008, 2009, and suddenly now nobody talks about it. You don't see them on the airwaves. Nobody's arguing with me because I've never been a believer in it. But, but that, is, that is the crux of it, and I don't think it is valid. Uh, oil will go the way that coal went, i.e. something better will replace it. In coal's case, it was oil. In oil's case, it might be something else. Does the resurgence of USA oil production mean that the peak theory was wrong? I've, I have never been a believer in the peak oil hypothesis. I have been quite public, quite vocal about it at, at events, at university forums. Uh, at places where I was surrounded by, by a lot of uh, so-called proverbial tree huggers and I was blasted out of the room but I have since 2009 or when peak oil theory was all the rage have always maintained that it will not be peak oil that would spell the end of the industry we would go down the way coal went coal was suddenly the most popular fuel and within a short space a few decades it was just replaced by another fuel medium, another fossil fuel medium, which is oil. And I would say that oil would also go down that route. There will always be oil. There is, there is plenty of oil. And even if conventional sources of tapping into that oil were, were, were not quite viable, we started coming up with unconventional ways of tapping. What would spell the end of oil would be that there would be uh, another better viable replacement, i.e. there'd be more renewable energy, there'd be more solar, and that would slowly reduce the oil, but I, I think it's here to stay. What lessons can be learned from the USA shale boom? I think the first lesson to take is, is that it takes time. The US shale revolution, you know, we've always known, um, engineers and, and geologists have always known that we've had shale gas for, uh, for, for better parts of a century. We've known that gas is trapped in rock formation. It's just that how soon a process developed to tap into that resource viably, safely. And it took the Americans better parts of what I would say is coming up to four decades. The shale bonanza, which is now truly a bonanza, especially for US manufacturers, was you know, long in the making. It did not happen overnight. And I think Europe can take a, take a lesson from that. We're, we're talking about shale in the UK. We're talking about shale in Sweden, Poland, and a whole host of uh, uh, jurisdictions. The Chinese want their own shale revolutions. The Russians also have shale gas. They don't need to tap into it right now, but it's at the back of their minds. The Argentines are attempting to, to tap into the shale bonanza. And everybody should look at the states and see the, the tenacity, the persistence, the mistakes. You know, there have been, been a few mistakes stateside. Take all of it, club it all together and say, see that it takes time, but you could eventually get